Hi everyone and welcome to Pencils and Stories. I'm very excited to relaunch the website and to have a brand new YouTube channel to go with it. This first video is about starting your own art and story projects, but mostly about three things that artists tell themselves that make it really hard to start their own projects. Well, they have an idea, but these three things are holding them back. If you've watched the introduction video of Pencils and Stories, you know that this channel and the website is all about helping you start and finish your own art and story projects. If that's something that you're interested in, please consider subscribing. In the description below is a free gift for you. It makes more sense why I'm offering this particular gift if you've watched the entire video, so I'm going to explain more about it uh, at the end. And now without further ado, here's the video. I think one of the things I hear the most when People give me a reason for not starting their art projects, a story project. I'm not ready yet. There's usually a reason below this reason, because there's a reason you think you, you are not ready. And I want to talk about three reasons why people think they're not ready and actually kind of dispel this myth. And I'm going to give you uh, one tip to be able to overcome that and actually start your project. So there's three reasons why people might say or think I am not ready yet. Number one, I'm not ready yet because I do not have the skill. That's a big one. Um, it's something I struggled with as well. Um, because you have a story in your head or you have a really great idea and you really love it and you have this mental image of it of what it's going to be. And then you look at your current art and you're like, that's not really what I want. I want to make this this really great thing and it has to be amazing and everybody has to love it. Uh, so I cannot start yet. So what do you do? You wait. <laughs> uh, that's basically what uh, a lot of people do. They wait until they're ready. And in between, they don't really know uh, what to do to get ready. They don't know when they're ready because they haven't, they have not really got a goal. And when they're improving, their actual tastes improve as well. So you kind of never get there. You're never ready because your skill is never where you want it to be. Welcome to the artist life. We're never satisfied with where we are right now. So you're in this kind of like situation where you're just never going to start because your skill is never going to be at the level that you wanted it to be. That's a tough situation to be in. And I would say to you, what's it going to take for you to get there? Do you have kind of like a measurable point that you're saying now I'm ready now I have that skill level now I'm gonna start I would actually say that the um how you're gonna get good enough at something let's take comics for example easy example I make comics but for example you want to make a comic I hear this a lot people are like I'm not skilled enough yet well the only way to improve in making comics is actually making comics. Making a comic will make you run into 20 million things. You do not know how to draw. You're gonna run into stylistic problems. You're gonna run into compositional problems. You're gonna run into all kinds of problems. So not making a comic because you wanna get better at making comics before you start making a comic makes no sense. If you have a very big like idea, a very big story, you might not want to tackle that first for two reasons. First of all, that's the story you want to make really good and really epic and really amazing in your head. You're, you're not there in your head where you want it to be. You are going to get stuck. Put that story on the shelf for a while. It's okay. Um, I know that's hard because you've really invested in it and you've written for it and you've designed the characters and you did all the stuff. You're just not making pages. You know, if that gets you stuck, Put that story on the shelf. It's not going anywhere. It's coming back later. I know a new story is not fun yet, but the moment you start investing in it and you start working with it, you know, you will get, you are going to love that story. So just work with that for a while. Do a shorter story at first. If you want to get started in making comics, pick a small story, make a short comic, Make it a little bit bigger, make it a little bit bigger still. And eventually like now I'm ready to tackle that big thing. Oh, but start, start making comics. And that counts for all the other stuff as well. You want to learn how to make really great illustrations? Start doing it. You can always do it again. There's people who do that. They will have 
the one kind of illustration. They illustrate that thing every single year because they want to see their progress. Um, you know, if you have a project that you want to illustrate and you think you're not, your skill's not there yet, illustrate it anyway. And if that story, same with comics, if that story is getting you stuck, shelve it. Like, you know, sometimes you have to work through story problems. That's also a thing. Like, don't, don't go and like, oh, I'm stuck. Yeah, of course you're stuck. Everybody's gonna get stuck at one point in the process. Sometimes you just have to go through that and eventually you will get unstuck and you will, everything will fall into place and you can actually do the thing. Um, but if the story itself makes you feel really stuck, work on something else, work on something smaller, work on something simple first, but keep doing the thing you eventually want to do. So whatever it is, make a tiny small project today. Like figure something out, make a few bullet points, kind of figure out what you want to do, but go make the thing. Second reason why people think they're not ready yet is I am not prepared yet. And by prepared, I mean they might have a story or they might have an art project and they want to prepare it first. They either need to do research or the story is not perfect yet or, you know, they first feel like they have to design the whole thing before they're gonna do it. You know, an example of comics they want to design the whole comic, like all the locations, all the characters, do a color script. They want to approach it like you're some kind of studio that has a lot of departments who, who prep all the stuff that makes it go down the pipeline smoothly. Um, first of all, you're not a studio. You're probably a one person show. There's a few reasons why you should not prepare everything beforehand. And that is, first of all, you're going to run into things as you go more things, new things are going to come up. And it's better to design them on the go. So you keep moving forward, actually, while you are making the project a reality. Just go, see what you run into, design it on the fly. Obviously, you want to have your main cast of characters designed before you start, because otherwise it's going to be really hard to start. You want to have, you know, like the first location or the first few locations. You want to have kind of an indication of the style, what kinds of coloring you're going to use. Um, you know, maybe do a quick 10 panel color script. You know, really rough, really crappy looking. Like we see those art books all the time. We see all that amazing concept art. My concept art looks like color blobs when it comes to color scripts. Like I just color blobs. Face hair color, like that. That's literally how I do that. Because it's not, you don't have to give it to another department. You don't have to give it to another person for them to go, oh, I exactly have to know what this character looks like and what all their colors are. You don't have to do that. The only person who has to understand what's going on is you. So make it really fast. So you know what you have to do. Don't make a concept art, unless you want to make a concept art book. So design on the go, as you go. In terms of story, you really want the overview. You want the beginning, middle, ending. You want to kind of roughly know what's going on, what kind of scenes are going to happen. Do you have to completely have to have everything written out before with all the dialogue and everything has to be final? No, because it's the same with designing. You're going to run into either new situations, you're going to get new ideas that are even more exciting. You're going to run into story, kind of like kings, kind of like little plot holes that you're going to go, oh, whoops, I need to fix that right now. Like that's, that's what's going to happen. Actually, one point I wanted to make too is that in a studio, they also not fully prepare everything before they start production. There's like whole scenes that are already animated that they drop because they are tightening up the story still as they go. It's the creative process. You get new ideas, other ideas are not as exciting anymore. You figured out a better way to do stuff. That's going to happen. So you can prepare everything in advance. But the moment you start actually engaging with the project in real time, everything's going to change again. So yes, prepare the most necessary stuff. For Recollection City, I had my main characters designed. I had kind of like an idea, like I dumped all the sketches. I dumped all the things that I had in my head 
in really crappy sketches onto paper so I kind of knew what I was doing but that's all gonna be refined as I go the moment I come to it. I have a Pinterest board with 20 million pictures um, I'm probably not gonna use half of them. I will get to certain locations I will get to certain story points and then I'm gonna look again and like is this still what I'm what I wanted to do how can I make it good in that moment stuff's gonna change same with story I know I know what will happen I have the overview but I only have it in scenes then this is gonna happen then that's gonna happen then that's gonna happen and I have certain kinds of like dialogue blips ideas that I've written down somewhere but I don't have the whole story written out. I'm probably gonna run into a few tiny plot holes. If you have big plot holes, by all means, fix them before you start. But you cannot prepare for everything. Start. Just start and go. But don't let that hold you back. Don't let, oh no, I need to be prepared. Because oftentimes that's fear. Because you wanna have everything covered, no. The moment you start, you're gonna run into problems. I had to figure out so much when I started and that was overwhelming and it was hard, but go through that, struggle through that and you'll be okay, I promise. <laughs> Third and last point that I wanna mention and there's probably more, but it's I'm not ready yet because I don't have the time. This is probably one of the biggest obstacles for bigger projects anyway. There's two things going on. Either your project is so big and you, you have so little time that you don't know how to fit the big project in a little time. Or you have a manageable project, but it's actually, you actually don't have a lot of time at all. And I'm not talking about, you know, you probably all heard this. There are ways to create time there are things you can cut out of your life or at least temporary for you to be able to gain more time and spend that time on your projects. Um, for example, you can watch less TV, you can wake up earlier. Um, there is like utilizing the time that um, you're not necessarily thinking about that you can use for art. For example, uh, your commute, if you're, by, if you're uh, traveling by public transport, that's the time that you can use. Uh, to maybe at least do some sketches or practice or uh, write stories and that kind of stuff. But there are periods in our lives where there just isn't much time. The go-to example obviously is if you have, a, if you have little kids, um, but you could also be setting up your own business. You can have a very demanding job with a very long commute by car. Um, or you can be you can be ill, uh, you can have less energy, you know you can have mental issues that make it really hard to be creative. You know, sometimes there's other stuff going on in our lives that make it really hard to start a personal project and uh, that can really suck up your time. And sometimes that's okay. We don't have to be creating all the time. It doesn't mean, if you, if you can't create right now, it doesn't mean you're not an artist. It doesn't mean you're a bad artist. I know I've heard the advice, draw every day, write every day. I've heard the advice. Sometimes there's periods where you can't, but that's, that doesn't suddenly make you less of an artist. In those periods, have a little grace uh, for yourself. Accept the fact that you do not have the time that you wish you had right now. Usually these periods are temporary. You know, your children will eventually go to school, which uh, creates more time for you. Um, maybe your business becomes of the, the kind where you have a, a little more passive income and you can actually, you know, uh, you can create some more free time for yourself. But focus on the stuff you need to focus on right now. You know, if it's your family, if it's your health, absolutely go for it. Um, it doesn't make you less of an artist. For those of you who have time, but it's limited, um, it can be a challenge to put a personal project in the time. You either have two options. You can create more time, which means you might have to sacrifice some stuff, not the essential stuff. Like don't, don't sacrifice sleep and don't sacrifice eating. Don't sacrifice, um, you know, taking walks outside. Don't sacrifice family time. Don't do that. You need a social life. You need to be healthy. 
uh, that all is good for your art. But there's always some stuff that you can uh, maybe maybe uh, cut short a bit, like less social media, less TV. You know, get really practical with um, a certain kind of other hobbies that you do, like make the choices there. It's um, it's a tough balance sometimes, but it's definitely possible to figure something out. So you can either create more time so you have more time for your projects, but you can also go the other way around and that's adjust your projects to the time you have available right now. So let's say you have 30 minutes a day. Maybe your projects will take longer to complete or your projects will be smaller, or your projects will have a certain kind of style that's really easy and fast to put out. Um, it all depends on what you want. If you have a um, like little story that you wanna illustrate, um, maybe don't go full out, full color, um, super elaborate, like, like pick a style that's easy to do, maybe in black and white, it looks really good in black and white, and you know, um, work on that 30 minutes a day, kind of see how fast you can crank it out, how much you need to do, and that kind of gives you the estimate of how long this project's gonna take you. You know, do a, do a tiny challenge, like um, a challenge that you can do. Like for example, you wanna, you wanna improve something, like you wanna improve um, drawing trees. I, I'm just saying something. Um, in 30 minutes a day, you can actually draw a tree every day. And let's just say you're, you're taking one month and you're gonna draw 30 trees. You're gonna draw different trees. So five minutes are spent searching for a good reference image, kind of five to 10 minutes of doing kind of like sketches and studies, and then you're gonna draw that one tree. And by the end you have a 30, you have 30, um, 30 different trees. And that could be really fun, like if you make it a nice kind of stylistic, uh, kind of like look, uh, like overall look, you can make a little booklet out of that and sell that at conventions or whatever. That's a, that's a small personal project that will take you a month and 30 minutes a day. That's totally doable. So kind of look for little tiny projects that you can do in the time that you have available. Set, uh, set a time for it. Like in, for example, the tree, uh, the tree thing, like I'm gonna do 30 trees, one month, 30 minutes a day, this style, go for it. You can make a comic in 30 minutes a day, absolutely possible. Um, you might not be able to do a fully painting, whatever. You can do that too. It will just take you longer to do. It will take you, um, you know, where some people can create one page a week. Maybe it will take you, um, maybe it will take you a month to do one page. That's fine if you have a shorter story. Um, I would not recommend a multiple hundred page comic uh, in that kind of like time frame you have available. Um, so that's kind of like a balancing act. So to recap, you can go two ways. You can either create more time, so you have more time to, to make a, a, a more elaborate project, or you can adjust the project to the time you have available. And it depends kind of on what you want, like either make your project smaller, make a tiny project, or, um, you know, have a less elaborate style, style, have a style that you can crank out really fast. So in the short time that you have available, you can still move your project forward and it won't take you forever to do. I think those are three reasons that people say or think or feel that they're not ready yet to start. Um, I was definitely in the preparation area <laughs> before I started Recollection City. Like I was writing, I was designing, I was tweaking, I was figuring out sizes for pages and panels and style tests. And eventually I was like, I should probably be making pages right now. That was a point where I realized that I was fooling myself and I was actually holding myself back because I was scared to start. And I hid behind the excuse of, I need to prepare more, I feel, I don't feel prepared. Newsflash, past self, you're never gonna be prepared. You're never gonna be prepared enough because you've never done a comic that looks like this. You've always drawn, like, really loose, <laughs> just playing it on the paper comics and tiny stories, one page stories, tiny stories. 
you're never actually done a project this, this big. You are not prepared because you don't have the experience. So go out and get the experience. And that brings me to like the biggest um, solution to this problem of not feeling like you're ready, but it's actually realizing that you are never ready and you should just start. That was it for this week's video. I hope it was helpful to you. If you recognize any of these three reasons, or if you have any other reasons, because obviously there's gonna be more, then I would love to hear about it in the comments. In the description is a free download. It's a list of 30 tiny projects that you can start today. In the video, I talked a lot about uh, the importance of starting. And also if you have limited time, if you're overwhelmed, uh, if you want to gain some experience, it would be really great to start with a small project first and then slowly expand. And uh, eventually you can tackle bigger projects. But to get you started, there's a list of 30 ideas that you can think about. So the download is in the description below. You don't need to leave your email address or whatever. But if you like these kinds of gifts, subscribe to my email list because I put out extended content related to the video. But also if I have any worksheets or PDFs or uh, summaries, then I will send them to my email list subscribers. For now, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and happy art making.